Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Greg. Welcome to the channel. Happy New Year. It's uh, 2019, January 1st. Hope you're all doing good. Ready for a new year. Fresh start. New Year's resolutions. Gonna keep them this time? <laughs> maybe. And maybe not. We'll see what happens as time goes by. Man, it's almost 2020. And I can remember when it was... Uh, 1989 doesn't seem like too long ago. I was just graduating high school. <laughs> Man, it's like 30 years ago already. Time goes by. But um, yeah, today I wanted to talk about um, a moon ritual that I, um, I guess I just thought of myself or maybe it's already out there. I don't know. I'm sure people already do this, but um, I got uh, influenced by uh, some of the Thunder Wizards um, uh, rituals. And um, I just uh, thought of this one day when uh, the the night before the full moon i've heard um the thunder wizard talk about the the full moon that always the the night before the full moon the the moon is still um ascending up in the air so it's still uh building building energy it's it's more powerful the day before the full moon once it gets to uh the full moon you know it, it stops moving it stops rising so the energy is just steady when it's still moving though that energy is still um gathering increasing and it's uh, it's a lot more powerful you know he talks about um like getting your mala or any kind of uh things you use in rituals to um on the night of the full moon or the, or the night before the full moon you leave them outside and let the moonlight the energy of the moonlight soaks them in whatever you you have out there soaks in the energy of the moon it uh, empowers it with the moon and if you don't know, the moon is the moon represents your mind. Uh, it represents your emotions, how you think. Well, it's more of your mind. It's not your intellect. It's, it's uh, your emotions, how you react to to things. It's um, and you know the the moon is um, it, it moves really fast too. It's going around the earth. Um, it changes every two and a half days. It changes signs, so it really represents the emotions moving constantly, moving the mind. And it's the uh, the reflection of the sun in the solar system. The solar the, the sun represents your soul, and um, you know your soul is your, your, your right here in your heart. That light is shining onto your mind, and then it filters through. This is how you um, we see it um, metaphorically. And so yeah yeah I was I was um, thinking about what the thunder wizard said about the night before the full moon, and I was thinking man if I go out into nature. On that night before the full moon, um, how can I bring in, gather that energy of the full moon within my body to get energized by it? You know, because um, the moon is a reflection of the sun, the sun's energy. It's just the sun's light shining onto the moon and then shining back down on us. You know, you don't want to go out in the daytime and gaze at the sun. You know, you're gonna you're gonna burn out your um, uh, what is it, your retinas. I know a lot of people do sun gazing. I don't really know the, the techniques or anything, but I don't, I don't do that. I don't participate in that. It seems dangerous to me. I mean, you, you look at it in a quick glance, but um, yeah, I can't really look at it for long periods of time. Maybe if it's um, obscured by clouds, you can uh, gaze at it a little more and you can feel that energy of the sun coming in. Um, I know I've heard people when it's right right before it's right when it's coming up over the horizon is when you can really look at it i've looked at it a little bit but it's usually on those cloudy days when i could really look at it and gather in that feel that energy of the sun but the best way to get the sun's energy is when it's filtered through the moon especially when it's the when it's the full moon the night before the full moon that whole that whole planet of the moon is just shining it's reflect, reflecting the light of the sun back onto the earth so um yeah, so the night before the full moon, I went out into uh, nature. And uh, I found a, well, this is a spot I always go to. It's, uh, it's on the edge of a mountain. So it's, uh, it's really best to find a spot where you can get elevated. It's because um, uh, as soon as you see that, that moon coming up, you want to, um, what I do is I face the moon and um, try to keep the neck always, uh, the head pointing downwards. So you don't get that that energy caught in in your neck, you know. As the sun's um, rising up, you don't want to be gazing at the sun like this. I mean, physically, you're gonna get you're gonna get 
the the neck back here is going to get all achy it's going to get sore you, you might even feel it the next day so that's why i was saying you should be elevated on, a, on the side of a, of a mountain or on the top of the mountain be elevated so when the moon starts barely rising you know you're kind of maybe looking downwards or you're looking at an on an even plane at it and you can keep your head pointed down like this and um what i do is just a, a kind of like a, a visual type of a technique where you're looking at you're looking at the moon you're gazing at the moon kind of squinting your eyes you know keeping that gaze on it concentrating on it and as you breathe in you're imagining the the rays of the of the moon the energy of the moon that glowing grayish color is coming in through your crown chakra as you as you're inhaling it's coming in and it's uh, going all the way to the heart area and you're just filling yourself up with that energy that grayish kind of energy you could even visualize it in your mind if you want to close your eyes after you you've inhaled and looked at it i usually keep my eyes open though and uh, i just uh, kind of imagine or tell myself i'm taking in this this energy of the moon into my body and through my crown all the way into the heart area and then on exhalation you let that energy go all the way down your body down through your legs through your heels into the earth and you're just um you're basically exchanging you're sharing that moon energy through you into the earth like you're um what do you call that a uh, a conductor a conductor of energy like you know metal metal can uh, transfer electricity from one side to the other that's what you're kind of doing you're being a conductor of the moon's energy you are um yeah you're just a uh, giving that energy to the earth and um, you're also you're also taking it in even though you're sending energy down you're loading yourself up with with moon energy and uh, just keep on doing that cycle just keep breathing in as you're breathing in you visualize that that moon's energy coming in through the crown, crown chakra all the way down to the heart area and on exhalation you're moving all of that energy all the way down through your legs through your arms you could even um uh, you feel it coming out of out of your arms through your hands into the earth sending it down and you're just like the the conductor of the energy this uh relationship with the moon and the earth you are uh, you're the mediator of that energy and it's really uh it's really uh, going to really empower you empower your mind especially if you know like the constellation that your moon is in in vedic astrology whatever that constellation is associated associated with as far as the emotions, the personality traits, whatever, you're going to really empower your mind with um, that constellation and that connection to whatever your, your moon sign is, too. You're going to re feel really powerful energy coming from the moon. So I end up doing this until, um, you know, the moon starts to rise, too. As it starts to rise, it starts to get, get a little bit harder to um, keep your neck down and look at it. So after a certain point, I'll stop. But I've been able to do it for 30, 40 minutes. I think one time I went 50 minutes. And sometimes um, my hands are on my side, but I'll face my palms out like this on my side. And um, I'm kind of also bringing in that energy of the moon through, through my, uh, the palms of my hands and through the crown chakra, bringing it in. And then on exhalation, you could just turn them around and um, send the energy out down through the palms of your hands into the earth and uh yeah it really works i mean the the first especially the, the first the first time i tried it the next day when i woke up and i got up i really felt that that energy that energy of the moon this really soft motherly nurturing energy and, I, and um in my aura i felt that that grayish that grayish glow all around my whole body it was it was a trip i was like wow this this really works especially the first time you do it is when you really get you really feel that aura of the moon inside of you i've done it three or four more times and you know i don't feel it as intensely but i still feel charged up with that energy and it, it really works the night before the full moon it really uh energizes you so yeah just a recommendation if uh, anybody wants to try that out it's a really a powerful practice. And so, yeah.
That's all I wanted to talk about. If anybody's interested in the Thunder Astrology readings, I'm still offering those. And uh, it's a form of Vedic astrology. It's uh, going to connect your higher, lower, middle consciousness. I'm going to give you a mantra based on your chart, specifically designed for you, the specific planet and deity based on your chart. And um, this is really going to empower you. It's going to really uh, strengthen you. It's going to help you to uh, tap into your real passion, your real soul's joy while you're in this in incarnation. And uh, yeah, it's really going to help you out, really keep you balanced in this world. So I'll leave the link on the bottom if anybody's interested. That's all I wanted to say. Happy New Year.